In this fourth video, we are going to see how to update uh, players' information as we play the video game, which is commonly called HUD. HUD stands for Head Up Display and it refers to every piece of information that we can see in the game screen referring to current state of the main player or the video game itself. We can talk about the total score of the player, number of life spending or current health level and so on. In order to deal with this HUD, we, can, uh, we have previously added some fruits to our video game so that each fruit is going to fall from the sky. And then we are going to increase the player score every time the bear catches a fruit and we are going to decrease the number of lives every time a fruit is lost, is falling down the sea. First of all, we can add these two new attributes to our game scene class. The first one is a public static value storing current score or points of our main uh, character, the player. Okay. The second one stores the current number of lives. Initial number of lives is going to be set to three lives. Next, we can add this additional method in our game scene to help us reset every initial value of our main character, uh, score and so on. We can reset the bear to its initial default position. This method can be added to our main character class to reset the position to the middle of the scene horizontally and at the bottom of the scene vertically more or less okay and then in uh, we set the number of lives again to three lives and the score we uh, set it back to zero this method can be called at the beginning of the draw method so that every time we need to replay the game, these attributes are going to be reset. Then, at the end of our animation timer loop, every time our bear catches a fruit, we can, for instance, increase the points from 10 to 10. And every time a fruit is being lost, goes down beyond the bottom limit, we can decrease the number of lives. So if lives get to zero, we stop this animation timer, we stop every pending music and we move to the credits scene because the game is over. Finally, we need to draw the information that is being updated, the number of points and number of lives. To do this, we are going to add an additional method which will be in charge of drawing or showing this information at the bottom of the scene. This is our method, which is uh, using an Arial font. Uh, we are going to paint in blue color our current score at the bottom left corner, more or less, with the current number of points and our number of lives at the bottom right corner in yellow, okay, using this piece of code. So we can call this method in the same place that we are drawing everything else, for instance here. We can update the head-up display at this moment. So let's play the game and see how it works. Here we can see the score at the bottom left corner and the number of lives at the bottom right corner. Every time we catch a fruit, we see how the score increases and if we let the fruit fall down, then the number of lives is going to be decreased from one to one. However, we can also uh, reset the beer to its default position every time we lose a life. 
we can, for instance, call reset position method that we have previously defined to set the beer as at its default initial coordinates. This way, every time a fruit falls down and disappears, the beer is going to be placed at the middle of the horizontal uh, scene. For instance, we are going to let this fruit fall down. And then the bear is going to be placed at its default position. If we lose all of our lives, then we move to the game over scene. For instance, we are going to let this fruit fall down. And then we are moving to the game over scene. Inside this scene, we could also print our total score before moving to the uh, welcome scene. To do this, we can go to credits scene and adapt the older show credits message and change it uh, for this new one, which show the game over uh, message along with our score. To show the score, we can just get the points attribute, which is public and static from game scene. So we can show this information from the other scene into this new one, taking into account that this attribute is public and static. That's why we set the, this attribute as static. So uh, if we play the game again, we can see how this final scene changes. Let's wait until every fruit has fallen down. And after this last fruit disappears, we can increase our score, for instance, a little bit. And as we move to the credits scene, we can see our final score before going back to the welcome scene. So now that we have our head up display ready to go, we are going to finish our simple video game by increasing the difficulty as we are playing it. In this video game, we can increase the difficulty in two different ways. We can increase the fruit speed, the, the speed uh, which is used by the fruit to fall down, or we can also increase the total number of simultaneous fruits that are go uh, falling down from the sky at the same time. We're going to choose the first option. We're going to increase the fruit speed every time our player catches more and more fruits. First of all, we need to add, or we can add, a new constant value, when well, indeed it's not a constant value, it's just a value to uh, represent the increment, the speed increment of the fruit falling down. Initially, it's going to be set uh, to zero, so there's no increment. But we are going to add an additional method at the end of, of this fruit class to increase this value. This can be the new method and we increase this step increment 0.2 units. Finally, our move method is no longer increasing the vertical coordinate from one to one. Instead of this, we are going to rely on this uh, additional value, step increment, to increase the vertical uh, coordinate one plus the given step increment. So in this case, as step increment is a floating point value, it's going to be truncated in the initial uh, uh, increments. But when this step increment reaches a value of one, 
then the vertical speed is going to be 2 instead of 1 because we are going to add 1 plus step increment that is going to be uh, 1 after 5 callings to this method. Basically, we are going to increase the difficulty every time our bird catches a fruit. So after every five fruits cut by our bird, the uh, difficulty is going to be increased in one point. So we move to game scene and every time we increase the score of the player, we also increase the difficulty of the falling fruit. Okay, we need to reset this value every time we uh, reset the game. So inside this reset method, we need to uh, set it back to zero. That's it. So if we play the game again, we start with the easiest uh, uh, difficulty level. So if we play the game now, we can see how this difficulty level increases after every five foot catchings from our bear. We start with the easiest level. And as soon as we catch five uh, fruits, we can see how this level increases. This is our last fruit for the easiest level. And then you can see how vertical speed increases. So it gets harder and harder to get to each fruit. Whenever we lose our three lives, this will happen sooner or later, then we go to the game over scene, okay, with our final score. So we have easily increased the difficulty of our video game by increasing the vertical speed of the falling fruits, okay, and we have made a complete and simple video game using every uh, basic aspect, including drawing images, sprite animations, sounds, music, sound effects, uh, collision detection, and so on. So I hope this video can be helpful for you to encourage you to uh, implement your own JavaFX video games.